Hi everyone. So it was nice to have a little break over Christmas and New Year's and I thought, although I don't sound perfect just yet, I thought I want to come back and share something with you. I got sick over um, New Year's Eve and yeah, still kind of um, getting over the, um, the flu. But that aside, I, um, while I kind of took the um, video break, I decided to dedicate some of that free time I had for learning how to paint in a botanical art style. And um, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I wanted to paint an artichoke from um, Billy Shovel's book which I'll show you in a second. So anyways, this is it. And I'm very, very proud and happy of it because this is my first ever attempt. And actually it already has been, I framed it, I finished it on New Year's Eve afternoon and I framed it. And yeah, it's been hanging and living on the kitchen wall. And it's such a pleasure to look at it and basically I've taken it out now because I use this um, blue tape which is meant to be a painter's tape and it's the scotch scotch blue um, which I bought for the purpose of um, mounting watercolor paper on boards or tables or um, a, a, that sort of thing and um, also inside the frames and however because it was a longer uh, sheet of paper I had to cut it down because the sides were sticking off a little bit from the from the frame if that makes sense while I was doing that um, I came across a big disappointment because this blue tape and I wanted to share this with you just in case you were thinking of buying it I would not recommend it because it was so aggressive. It basically ripped all this paper you can see. That is from that white insert um, from the frame. And although you can't see it from the outside, it's just horrific. Um, it's, it's done a lot more damage than a regular masking tape. And also it has ripped the paper quite severely as well um, but I obviously cut off those sides anyway so that wasn't a problem but like I said um, it's awful so uh, I would not recommend this tape so basically while I was um, I had to do this I decided to quickly make the video because once I'm going to frame it it's not going to come out anymore so it's, um, let me start by showing you the book that I used it, this illustration from. So this is the um, Billy Shovel's Fruit and Vegetable Portraits book. And I'll quickly show you the illustration. So it's this artichoke here that I was working from, as you can see. It's not the exact copy because first of all, I have used a rough paper and I love, I know that for botanical art, it's not recommended to use uh, textured paper, which would be either cold pressed or hot um, or rough. You are meant to use only the hot press, which is very smooth for that great detailing. However, I love that organic look of the textured um, papers and watercolor papers and so I personally I really like this style and also it makes uh, makes me feel like I'm not copying the artist's um, work and I'm trying to do something um, of my own style but learning from the artist so um, as you can see my colors are a lot more brighter and the reason being is that I used uh, different watercolors to Billy Shovel's so, end. So what I've done next was I um, decided to look at this simple four steps um, guideline from Billy. 
and follow it. So I started with a very light mix of the watercolor. So it's a kind of like a wash, then intensified in places and so on. So then the detailed work. Now, although there are four steps here, it have taken me about, uh, I think, a, a total of eight um a total of eight steps or layers of intensifying things. I think the actual watercolor and things like that, I think it was six. And then on top of that, I did a couple more with the detailing. So um, I have, however, started very pale. And if I would have started uh, with a stronger color and... Um, I probably and and sort of leave the areas for the highlights to work separately on I could have done it in a shorter uh, period of time I think but this was a learning curve and I really enjoyed sort of starting with a very mild and very simple step now I do have all the images uh, on my phone step by step So in terms of watercolour, this book was published in 2014 and at this stage um, Billy Shawl was using her um, Windsor and Newton watercolours and um, in the new book, the one with the rose on the cover, but in that book she switched to the uh, Sennelier watercolours and that's the watercolour set that I bought. So I decided not to go with the Sennelier because she hasn't used them in this book and I don't have Windsor, Windsor and Newton. So I decided to pick a watercolor that I wanted to try and I wanted it to be quite um, vibrant. So I went for the Magella watercolors and this is the set that I have. So let me see how many colors was it? 36 color um tube set and that's what it looks like so what i've done is i have um just by looking at the colors of this artichoke i picked colors out so looking at the swatch card i kind of roughly picked out the colors that i needed so obviously there's some greens and obviously there's some yellows and then there are these kind of violet colors as well magenta colors for the detailing and um there's also a lot of warmth so looking at it i then quite quickly realized that i need five colors and I wanted to limit it. I didn't want to start picking out, uh, I don't know, four or five different greens. I wanted to mix the greens. And um, so that's what I've done. So I'll show you the five colors that I have picked. So I use my ceramic uh, palette for this. And it's very good because it's white and it mixes very well. The puddles stay nice and creamy. So uh they don't uh, beat up and i'll quickly show you which watercolors i've used so here are the swatches so from top to bottom i've used lemon yellow red violet van dyke green olive green burnt sienna so obviously um the two greens um, gave me sort of this variety of the greens that I needed to have so it would be the, the dark greens over here they're perfect for the Van Dyke green and then the olive green is the all over general fitting color and then for what I needed to warm it up a little bit uh, is the burnt sienna and obviously mixing in the lemon yellow when I need it and a red violet also 
I had to mix up. I don't remember exactly which colors. I think the red violet I mixed up with the Van Dyke green. So basically I just eyed it by looking at this and I think it would be quite useful for you to know that you you can approach it this way as well. You don't need to be scared that you need to follow every single step, although if you want to, you can. But um, for example, in this particular example, there isn't a exact step-by-step -step guidance. So, but you, if you do like the image, you can do what I've just explained to you. So you can easily trace the image and you can then look at the watercolors, pick the watercolors that you have. You don't have to buy the watercolors that the artist says they use, but you can if you want to, obviously. It depends um, how you want to learn. For the first watercolor um, experience, I really enjoyed doing it the way I have done it. It gave me a little bit more freedom So that is how I approached this whole process and it was really fun um, because what I'm trying to share with you is that if you like something but you look at it and you think it's unachievable, it isn't. You just really have to um, kind of sit down and start somewhere and then just continue step by step. I did this artichoke in about I think about three hours maybe so it's not that bad and I haven't done it in one sitting I actually done it in three different days and it was really fun to do a few layers and then come back to it later and see how it would you know just start kind of coming out of just the wide piece of paper it's super satisfying and I'm so happy that I have um, forced myself to sit down and dedicate time to learn this particular art um, of the botanical you know um, watercolor painting and so that's why I wanted to share this excitement with you and to say that look you know for a first time this is pretty good and I think you if you are a little bit afraid to start just have a go and it's not that scary actually once you do start so I hope this inspired you to have a go and really um, just you know start with something it could be anything if you think this is too complicated pick something that is easier because she has loads of different things for example you know something like this is not that complicated there aren't that many colors there isn't that many textures to work with you can um, pick for example just a raspberry you don't need to paint the whole um, illustration if that's a little bit uh, scary for you at the moment. So just pick something. Pick pick just this beautiful little strawberry and work from that. Um, or you can do start you know in your sketchbook. You can just work with um, textures and just fragments of something it doesn't have to be a finished fruit or a vegetable it can be just a part of something so that you learn the technique for example this rana bean um i can see that she's using the um dry brush technique here so uh, to create these lovely textural elements and also by the way a couple of days ago I've subscribed for one month for her classes and I have been really enjoying them they have been really inspiring because um, I can now see exactly how she uses and um, mixes those Sennelier watercolors so that I can finally embrace that uh, watercolor set and I think um, having learned a few things by doing this artichoke I think I will uh, actually start enjoying Sanelier. That's just the feeling I have. 
So thanks for watching. Once again, sorry for my voice and um, hope you're all well and see you soon. Thanks for watching.